So wait a minute. Wait, what on earth? Ping is talking about speed. TaylorMade's talking about boosting MOI and forgiveness. What the hell's going on? We have devolved into chaos in the driver <laughs> category here. Up is down, <laughs> left is right. Um, yellow is joyful. I don't know. I, I have no idea what's going on. We're sticking red rings on drivers here. We're back, Tony. How's everybody living? No putts given. It's January, second week, third week in January. I don't know. <laughs> It's another week, a bunch more releases. We're going to get into them. I have so many We're... props on my desk, and we are, and I don't even have props for everything. We got a lot going on. Yeah, props upon props upon props. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break out a prop you did not see coming either. So. Ooh, I like that. We're Surprise talking, prop. We're talking tailor made. We're talking Cobra a little switch. Not a soap dispenser either. This week. Uh oh, not a soap dispenser. But before we do that, Tony, we had a four one out. For the 25 year career of Doc Hawk. Doc Hawk, yeah. Callaway and senior VP of RD, Alan Hockmill. He's been there forever. That farted ways. Dude's a legend. Absolute legend. Instrumental in probably every, every Callaway product for as long as any of us can remember for sure. And yep. unique talent. I was always surprised because you talk to Alan, like, yeah, all right. He's the guy you talk to about drivers. And he's the guy you talk to about irons. Yeah. And then to kind ball. of speak to the versatility, right? Like I had golf ball conversations with him, which is super rare for the driver guy to also be yeah. deep in with the ball and have that kind of understanding. So, yeah. If, yeah. You, well, he's, if you only talk to Alan, you may not understand that at other companies, they have different people. <laughs> different things because it's like hey i got a ball question like uh send him now hey uh what about the uh, driver tech stuff mm, send him now so he won't be uh my guess if i had a wager i guess uh we'll see him resurface probably sooner rather than later but if he wants to if he decides yeah. he wants to for sure yep so alan great work hope to hear from you soon uh i'm sure you're sad to not be at the PGA show this year. All right. <laughs> happily, happily making sourdough, I'm sure. Yeah, right. Let's start with Cobra, Tony. Oh, I do have no props. No props for Cobra. No Aerojet props. They um they, they didn't come off my flight from Tallahassee. They didn't they didn't make it with the baggage, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, we're gonna talk through each of these, just little structure here. We'll hit drivers for sure, because everybody wants to to know about that and then to the degree that tony cares or i'm allowed to i will throw in some tidbits uh about fairy woods and or hybrids i did get i received a dm this morning tony that said more than tens and tens of people should read your articles whoever that person was i thank you appreciate you <laughs> very 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 she funny. was one of the tens hey all right all so right. Cool. Talk yeah. to, what uh what do we need to know what's uh what's good so as, as you may be able to decipher from the name, the Aerojet is an aerodynamic design that is also fast because jets are both aerodynamic and fast. Um, Makes sense to me. So, and yes, you can mention that these are, you know, bits and pieces of names of tailor-made drivers that that particular company might want you to forget. So well, um, rest assured, this is not what happens when you mate an aero burner with a jet speed. This is an entirely different and let's I think not. better thing. Let's, let's hope. But yeah, let's not do that. Let's. Uh, so what do you get, Tony? I mean, because, yeah, the aero story, it's uh, something that's intriguing and people probably don't realize this, right? But the USGA does place limits on things uh, club design so many different things we talk about but other than being quote unquote kind of plain in shape they don't there there isn't an aerodynamic limit yeah the limit the limit on aerodynamics are the reality of the driver itself so you sort of ideally think of an airplane wing right you have that that really gentle curved leading edge uh, that's not going to work with a driver you kind of need that that big ish blunt face okay. so that's always going to be your limiting factor and the rest of it is what else can you do with that shape to kind of make that keep that airflow from separating as long as possible and kind of maximize speed throughout the swing so that's 
that's kind of the driver for the aero jet name is that aerodynamic piece and Cobra says, you know, this comes from a lot of that work with they've done with Bryson and Kyle Berkshire on the long drive side, where, you know, those guys obviously in that particular event, like speed is everything. And so they're constantly working with shapes to try and get more speed for guys that are already blessed with absurd speed. And then kind of from there, it just trickles down in the consumer lineup. So well, theoretically, the most aerodynamic designer kind of, it, you know, if someone were taking aerodynamics 101 and say, hey, what does that mean? Basically, what I hear you saying is you got the front of a driver. Obviously, as it's moving, air hits the driver this way and starts to disperse up and obviously disperse down. And then what we want is we want that air to effectively stick to the rest of the body. Right. And when the air separates, that's essentially drag. So when the air starts to separate up or down, that creates drag, and we want to minimize drag. So we really want that air to kind of hug and create a very, very kind of little weight behind. If you think of a boat, right, like if it has a really, really tight weight behind it, it's it's more aerodynamic, probably going a little bit faster, right? So makes sense. Everybody knows that probably, but, but what is Cobra doing to or better than perhaps others? I mean, it's subtle. Like you, you see things like in the transition from where the face meets the crown, right? That gets that's really smoothed out. And part of what made that possible to an extent was getting rid of the uh, the milled face. So that that helped a little bit there. You see it in the transition on the uh, on the bottom side of that front edge, and then where you kind of really notice it too is the raised tail, if you will, kind of the raised aft section. So the butts up in the air a little bit. And then one other subtle little thing uh, that I, I don't think a lot of people are going to notice, but the, the shape of the crown, that kind of that where it peaks is a little farther back. So mm -hmm. subtle, subtle things meant to, I mean, we're, we're not talking massive gains here and, and the rules applies, right? This is aerodynamics is effectively a force multiplier. So you don't get plus X mile an hour. It's times X of the aerodynamic impact. And ultimately what that means is if you swing fast, you're going to get more benefit because of aerodynamics. And if you swing slow, you're probably not going to get much of anything. And, and that sucks, but this is not a rule I make. So and it's, it's if I understand it correctly, too, it's kind of it's a percentage basis, right? Where it's not, you know, it, it's a flat application, meaning, hey, if you swing 120, and let's just say they improved the aerodynamics, but let's say 10%. If I swing 120, I'm that gonna get... be, <laughs> that's ambitious, but okay for easy math. I don't want it. <laughs> so, if I swing 120, I get 1.2. If I swing 100, I get 1. If I swing 90, I get 0.9. So it's not, it, it, I mean, it's not disproportionate in, in that regard. So, yeah, yes. it's just the actual number of miles per hour. It's, yep. it's, you get fewer at slower speeds. I'm sorry. Yep. So it feels like you could do a really cool test with this where let's just say you took last year's model, same head shaft did it and then just swap the head should be faster right maybe so and this is one of those things i'm like yeah it's it's an interesting test and right it's, it's a good test maybe but the thing you have to understand with anything like this there are other factors in play because something is as basic as center of gravity location i don't think a lot of people think about this but center of gravity location can influence because it influences the way the club kind of moves and bends and twists through the swing center of gravity location itself has a bit of an aerodynamic impact or certainly an impact on on how golfers react to that center of gravity so you swing it a bit differently and it's it's absolutely not uncommon for example for one golfer all other things being equal to swing a forward center of gravity design faster than a rear center of gravity so you can look at it and you know we're not talking massive shift in center of gravity from right. the previous model but it Right. It's an imperfect, though compelling test, is what I would say. Mm -hmm. How's that? How's that? So how many? So three models, correct? Yeah. So we have the LS. That's the low spin. Always ah. no surprise. Little so parts. low spin uh, weights, heel and toe weights. It's kind of in the in the draw position. It's it's actually, I would say, probably slightly fade biased. And then if you swap them. 
uh, more so fade bias. Yeah. So it's it's slightly fade to to more fade. Yep. The uh, the standard version, no swappable weights, kind of neutral to slightly draw bias, and then you have the max, which obviously can be neutral ish, like a slight to moderate draw bias, and then heavier draw bias. And then the other the other piece of the technology we should talk about is kind of the uh, the PowerShell phase. So this is the first time that Cobra has taken that PowerShell technology from the irons and stuck it in a driver. And again, getting rid of the milling helped make this possible. It's kind of, you can call it an L phase, kind of a tuck under, whatever you want to call so it. So ledge to it. Yeah, there you go. And that helps produce a little bit more speed, particularly on, on low face impact. So, you know, it's, it's here pretty much you know, your standard, hey, speed over more of the face story, more aerodynamics, and then Cobra, Cobra tends to, I wouldn't say, push the absolute limit of MOI. They're not in that, you know, Ping and PSG are the two companies that, like, hey, push we it. are going to go right to the USGA limit as much as we can, just about every time. Whereas Cobra tends to be kind of in the next tier down, kind of that forgiveness without compromising speed too much. And yeah. so that's where kind of everything fits, um, kind of where they've been. So I think, you know, you're not going to notice anything radically different in that respect it's ultimately going to come down to am i going to get more speed out of the ls in particular because that is the most aerodynamic of the shapes and then right. from there, hey, how well do these fit me are they are they giving me the speed to launch in the spin that i need and, and i'm optimistic I, I like these quite a bit so yeah we'll see yeah i mean two things real quick that on the fairway woods and hybrids the two things that i want to point out i appreciate that cobra did this because you're always not concerned, but kind of looking with fairway woods and hybrids. It's like, okay, let's look at the list of every awesome piece of technology that's in a driver. And then let's see what they left in the fairway woods and hybrid, right? Like, did they carry stuff through? Sometimes they don't because you're dealing with a fundamentally different situation. 460 cc is a much bigger club. There are things that make sense in a driver that even if you could do it in a fairway wood or hybrid, don't yield the type of results, right? Juice isn't worth the squeeze, so to speak. But the power bridge technology that they're using where it, you know, it, instead of connecting. That's right. I forgot to mention that with the driver. I forgot to talk about power bridge. So let's talk about power bridge. Let's do it. Connect. It's on the inside, right? So pre previously they had the power core stuff, which basically was, you know, a steel. It was, it was bolted a to the soul, bolted to the soul right behind the face. This one truly is a bridge where it connects again. This we're talking inside the head here. You can't see it connects on the heel and toe sides and uh, absent that you might look at it and it kind of looks like it's floating almost if it were behind the face. So you have this floating structure as a bridge behind the face connects heel and toe. It lets that ledge of the face sit underneath it. Right. Does not impede the face's not, ability to flex. That's the key piece. And I love that they included that in the fairway woods and hybrid. So the things that you get in the driver, that are key technologies. You also get those in the fairway wood and the hybrid. The downside, the one drawback, is they had to get rid of the rail. They couldn't do all that techie stuff and have the rails on the bottom, but they've assured me that they changed the leading edge radius, make it a little bit tighter to kind of keep that leading edge almost a little bit low uh, and try to you know, help, help golfers kind of sneak that under the center of gravity, the ball. So think it performs in their testing uh, similarly in, in that regard. So if you were like me and you love that rail, uh, having that opportunity or that option, fear not, it's not totally gone. The function, uh, the, the rails are gone, the function isn't. And the, the kind of the, the interesting kind of cool thing about the power bridge, again, it's kind of a stiffening system, right? Keeps that, tightens everything up allows the face to flex. And the other thing, because the anchor points, if you will, are kind of at the extreme heel and toe at the perimeter, actually serves to boost MOI. You get that, as we talked about with the rad speed, right? right? That radius of gyration. We're going to take mass and we're going to push it as far away from the center of gravity as we can, where it actually does some good things for us, yeah. has benefit. And in this case, helps increase MOI while also serving to help increase ball speed to the extent allowable. Of course, there's your... You know, there's your little asterisk. I don't want to hear it. Moving on. Let's see. This is 
the launch that will not stop. We're talking about ping. G430. Oh, oh, yeah. I feel like I feel like this like it's been going on since 2019. It's like yeah, it's like uh <clears throat> you know kids when they have, you know, like uh, divorced parents, right? And you go from house to house, you get like 13 Christmases, four birthdays, and you know, it's like a month long of celebration, right? And I feel here we are because you know, we launched or they launched uh you know, Australia, New Zealand, Oceania, etc. Now we got the U.S. launch, but there's still one piece of the U.S. launch that isn't totally out yet that's going to be out hopefully in the summer. So by the time that comes out, it'll almost have been uh, likely a full calendar year, but spanning two years of Ping G430. I mean, it's got, this, this release has legs. I'll give it that. It is the launch that just won't stop. But Tony, drivers. You know, this one, no, let me let me grab this one. Is this a so, prop one? Standard G four thirty max, which you know, maximum MOI kind of almost goes without saying. Close to the USGA limit. Functionally the same MOI as the previous model, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, technically, I think dissecting pings uh, graphs, it's about five points lower, so you won't notice it. Um, Let's start right. So it has this black and yellow colorway, which is feeling relaxed, <laughs> feeling very inspired. Apparently associated with joy, happiness, and optimism. So hopefully, wow. just seeing this on the podcast will make everybody's day just a little bit better. So joy, happiness, and optimism with the yellow. So there's that. Joy, hope, optimism, yellow. I'm feeling better about it. Yeah. So now that everybody's feeling optimistic and joyous and, and happy in a general sort of way. We can talk about the sound. The big piece of the G430 story is huge improvements to sound because I think a lot of golfers thought that the previous generation sounded like crap. Uh, to put it mildly, I thought, yeah. I thought Ping was in a good good spot with G400 in that series. I thought, yes. you know, they kind Four of nailed ten. it there. And then it was just like progressively, progressively worse. And if you talk to the guys at Ping, they kind of concede that, yeah, along the way, we we traded away sound because of the performance implications. And there, there is. There's always give and take you, the golfers don't even think about, right? To, to yep. manage sound, to make things sound good, you typically have to put these structures, ribs, whatever, inside the club head. And those have consequences in terms of mass, center, gravity, location, all that. So it becomes this, this balancing act of, trying ever to get things to perform like you want them to and sound good. And, uh, you know, ping maybe whiffed a little bit on the sound. Yeah, I think that's fair. It's, you know, we talk about those little things that are marginally different. And sometimes there's these things they're doing behind the scenes where it doesn't really matter until a consumer notices it. And then as, as soon as they do, it's like, oh boy, uh -oh. we got to go back and, and fix that. And I think this was one of those things where, yeah, 400, 410 to a degree. I thought we're uh, in in that kind of sweet spot, so to speak. 425, I do not think uh, was at all in that sweet spot. Like you said, I think Ping, Ping admits to that. To their credit, they feel like they've addressed that with this one. So this one should theoretically sound and feel, quote unquote, better. And that'll be that'll be ultimately that that's gonna golfers will decide that, right? Ping. While there is some some science to sound and sort of predictive algorithm programming, they throw at it. Ultimately, golfers decide what does and does not sound good. And I think yeah, that's certainly an opportunity to improve there. Yeah, no doubt. So you ready for the kind of the wild part of the story as far as I'm concerned? I, has that ever been said before with Ping, wild? No, no. Well, and this is kind of why it's wild. Ping right. is talking about speed. What? This is a company that hammers home, like, we're going to be forgiving, and they are almost always the most forgiving. Even even the low spin LS, prop number two, we'll talk about this part in a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, even the L low spin LS tends to be among the handful of most forgiving drivers on the market in any given year. And the point mm -hmm. being, we're not going to kind of push the center of gravity forward, go nuts for speed at the expense of forgiveness. That's kind of the ping way, but... Yep. They are claiming more speed this year. Uh, again, face optimization is something we're hearing a lot from everybody and kind of 
done things to optimize face and made it a little smaller, done yep. some other stuff where at the connection points to, to effectively try and return more energy to the ball. So again, you know, they're, why, they're making some claims here. The number. Why now, Tony? Like, why do you think now? Like, I, I, I get it. And that's, at some point, you have to. Is it just there was finally a mountain of evidence? Because, you know, this is something we saw or are seeing a little bit. Same type of, of conversation on the fairway woods to a degree of like, hey, we pushed MOI uh, to a point where sometimes more is just theoretically better. But if you actually. You know, it's like, man, what if we backed off the MOI forgiveness a little bit, address speed, and they actually found a more workable balance that actually created more distance in their testing and, most importantly, tighter downrange dispersion. So, so Ping talking about accuracy, increased distance, but, but also hitting the accelerator a little bit more. And I just wonder if it finally got to the point where it's like, hey, we – we can't give up one, two, three miles an hour of ball speed anymore and and feel, you know, good about uh, competing. And I don't, I don't think it was that extent. I think, you know, for a lot of golfers, it was competitive. Although I do think textbook hitting bay, we talk about it all the time, right? Where the difference between the, the driver you buy and, and the one you don't is often a single shot. Right. So I think there probably is some consideration to that. And the claims by, by ping standards are reasonably bold. And there is, especially around the LST, some nuance to kind of how they got there that's worth looking at. But, uh, you know, check out the article. Um, but LST, yeah. they're saying within the, the target player group as well. So this right. isn't, hey, the whole world. This is LST above 105 miles an hour, seven more yards. Uh, G430 Max, your typical consumer golfer being 90 to 105 plus four yards. And then your SFT, which is your below 90 crowd is the where they tested. And I, I maintain slicers come in all swing speeds. But you know, specifically <laughs> when you're looking at your, your point of greatest optimization, I guess, uh, five yards longer uh, year, uh, model over model for that crowd. So some some auspicious claims by ping standards. So it'll be interesting to see how that actually plays out in the real world, in the hitting bed and in, in our test. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, we don't I mean, I was looking back through some of the most wanted testing, like you know, Ping has always been very, very balanced in a lot of regards and done very well in testing. I think in, in part, right, due to the forgiveness piece and, and based on how we tested and, and awarded points and those type of things, but you didn't necessarily go, man. Who's hitting just absolute bombs? But man, if you just sort select by ball speed, you, you're not used to seeing ping at the very top of that list. You're used to seeing TaylorMade, Callaway, maybe Titleist. Yeah, um, ping, ping kind of had to win on aggregate. <laughs> That's how I would say, right? You would, don't mm -hmm. always don't always win every category. In some cases, any category, but it's you know, right. just going to float. The idea is to be close enough to the top across the board, and so yep. to kind of see them. Pushing speed as a selling point is interesting and you know solid detail that's worth pointing out. So as I mentioned, the the max is fractionally lower MOI. Like you you're not going to notice it's, it's within the yeah, noise. Yep. Um, and despite increasing speed apparently across the board, both the SFT and LST are higher MOI than their previous models. So okay, good stuff there. Um, we'll touch real quick before we move to the next point on the ping stuff. Touch. The, G430 LST carbon fiber crown. First time Ping has done that in a long, ever. long time. Let's go back. To Not the ever. Rapture. Yeah, Rapture, Rapture V2. 2016 ish, I think. Yeah. Uh, only on yeah. the LST, yeah. slightly smaller footprint. And Ping was pretty straightforward about it. There's, there are implications. We're, we talk about this all the time structure, glue, all the stuff that has to hold a crown on that eventually. And to do that, you trade away mass properties, the things you want. A lot right. of guys like to make a big weight savings claim with carbon yeah. fiber, but again, you're putting a lot of it back with the supporting structures. So, Ping's thing is, hey, we didn't, we we didn't want to go all in and risk crowns popping off, and so we did it on the smaller one where it's easier to to maintain crowns. And and part of that has to do with the weight. You don't think about it, but at impact, there's a lot of vibration that goes through these big weights in the back, and so that can potentially cause problems and so if you're if you're going to have 
a lot of mass anchored at the back, yep. which is typically what you see in a high MOI design that can create complications for other structures, I guess. Durability, right? So, yeah. So, yeah. hey, good call on that. But now I have a question for you. I'm ready. This is the surprise prop. This is another big talking point for the G430 driver line. An egg? Yeah. Oh! Oh! So, oh, spinsistency. Spinsistency. I thought it was going to be scrambled eggs. And Marty Jertson, spinsistency. It, yeah, they yeah, did not have a person with a speech impediment come up with that term, for <laughs> sure. But it, But it's super... Important. I mean, it, it again makes sense once you understand like the whole again idea behind it. So, talk me through bulge and roll, and why should I remember the egg when I think about ping? So we are. This is exaggerated, but when ping talks about bundling spin consistency, which in case it isn't obvious, isn't an amalgamation of the words spin and consistency. The spin idea being the driver face will provide more consistent spin. You essentially have a face topology that's a bit like an egg. Now, this is exceptionally exaggerated, but kind of like this more upright on the top and a little more rounded on the bottom. And yeah, so kind of that type of shaping apparently leads to more consistent spin results and perhaps of, of greater note, uh, low impact, low face impact in particular is going to launch lower than golfers may be accustomed to. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but in addition to that consistent speed or spin, it's gonna come off faster. So you're gonna you're gonna retain more speed on low face contact because of the spin consistent face technology. So typically when we talk about drivers, we talk about bulge and roll, right? That the the face is not perfectly flat that there's curvature in both directions, so from top down and from heel to toe. And sometimes, like I said, on a lot of designs, that the curvature is uniform. So whatever the radius, it, it stays the same throughout. Consistency, not so much. It, like you said, it's a little bit more vertical, if you will, as you get towards the top. And it's then a achy. little bit, yeah, a little achy. bit more aggressive as you get towards the bottom. So those heel shots that tend to go nowhere, drop a ton of speed, and I don't know, a lot of times, oh. you know, just spin through the roof. Um, again, Those, yeah, the low face ones, you mean? Right. Yeah, sorry, the low face ones. Incremental improvements, and this is something that uh, that Ping has on all of their metal wood situations, right? It's not just a uh, driver story, but right. This um, this is trickle down from the fairways woods technology, and they're putting some numbers on it. So, again, compared to the previous model, I believe. 85 mile an hour group is getting about an extra yard of distance uh, because of spin consistency. 100 mile an hour guys, two and a half or 2.2, excuse me, compared to the previous model. And the really fast guys, your 115 plus crowd, an additional yep. five yards on what we would typically regard as a garbage shot that you don't love. Or, you know, for me, I. I tend to work the bottom of the face pretty hard. What you call uh, just so, another Sunday. Yeah, dead at nut the course. center. <laughs> My dead nut center. Is, yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. So, again, yeah. uh, you know, so many of these things, we should start our own kind of file folder. We talk about mm -hmm. the importance of incremental improvements and how things are, you know, we're not year over year looking at these leaps and bounds and major uh, improvements on, I, I mean, coming out with unobtainium or some kind of material that gives everybody 17 yards or something crazy that, that that isn't the world we live in right now. It's, it's materials, it's design processes. So something like this, the consistency conversation, finally using carbon ping in, in an application, even if it's only on the smallest head, that's a little step. It right? has a carbon fly wrap. It's a carbon fly yeah. wrap. That's right. Which they also were using on on the fairway woods and and hybrids, and again because you're talking much less surface area, uh, certainly less of a risk of the crown popping off or or anything like that. So okay, start with that. My hunch is if it does well on the LST and you have that, maybe next generation we're going to see uh, you know carbon throughout the line, have a full on ping carbon party. 
And we, I've been asking that question year after year, every release, probably starting with, with going back to at least G30. Right. And being like, Hey, are we going to, are we going to put carbon fiber on these anytime soon? And the answer, <laughs> they've never wavered, wavered. And like, we will use carbon as soon as we find it advantageous to do so. And these guys, you know, really good at casting titanium, really thin titanium, kind of take a good bit of the weight savings out of the typical equation. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't see it. And now, now here we are. So a yeah. gun, something different. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how that sound and feel aspect plays out. Uh, one other thing of note, Ping is offering what it is calling the HL. I launch driver, I guess, and you know, we're not going to make a huge deal out of it. It's basically just a G430 Max built at a lighter weight. So it, okay. instead of the 26 gram weight, there's an 11 gram weight. Uh, lighter shaft, lighter, lighter grip sounds eerily familiar to a lot of other things. And the upside here is um, you know, you're going to pay the standard price. You don't have to pay $700 to get pings take on leg weight. So, so no uh, upcharge for, again, for the slower swing speed crowd, the guys looking to gain speed through club head speed exclusively who are also in the same group who doesn't benefit from aerodynamics. Here you go. go. Here's an option you haven't had from ping before. So that's kind of yeah. cool as well. And that's a trend when we uh, talk at some point through kind of emerging trends within the industry that that's certainly going to be one of them with the hl type of uh offerings and and what's out there for that golfer and now we go from a company that just started using carbon in that way to a company that still isn't going to use carbon in their metal woods at all strixon yeah I mean, not a need i i mean kind of a you know it, it's tough always Always tough for a small company, smaller companies, especially in the in the metalwoods category where mm -hmm. Trixon does not sell a million drivers to kind of get to Fair avoid enough. getting lost amongst the Callaways and the TaylorMades and the Pings and, and yep. even the Cobras and probably you know grateful at this point we haven't seen a new Titleist driver yet. So yeah, Trixon has drivers as well. But and, and they have three models. There's one of the three though that I'm really interested in. They you know they they've had kind of this five and seven uh, as as their designations, right? But this time around, in addition to the five and the seven, they have what Tony? They have a ZJ5 LS, a low spin, and it's it's weird because sort of categorizing it is something they haven't had before but some of the the seven series drivers have been definitely on the lower spinning side so i think it probably you see kind of the seven now position is more of a i don't want to say meat of the market but certainly sort of a more playable for the masses kind of cloud and then the zk5 right. ls can come in and, mm -hmm. and fill that low spin need it's kind of interesting to me now, obviously the the hope is it it will continue to have tour players at Brooks who's playing the, the five LS. I think so. Certainly. So you got, the, you you got, got Brooks that. dabbling with it. You don't want to see him go back to Taylor made. If you're Strix on again, you don't want to see that play out. Of course. Right. Uh, uh, playing on the live tour. You're not going to see Brooks at all anyway, but <laughs> unless you're tuning into the YouTubes, right. Uh, that reality side. Yeah. It's a curious one for me because typically again, in the driver category, right. According to market share numbers, not, not my opinion, but just what the market tells us. Shrixon is a little bit of a niche company in that market. And so to see mm -hmm. them kind of step in and offer what is also a niche driver within their own kind of niche is is interesting. I don't expect they're going to sell a ton of them. But at the same time, like, hey, we're going to make this for the tour. We might as well make it for consumers and see how it goes, especially in fitting environments. You never know. Yeah, make it an option. So I, I like it. I like it. There's a contingent of people out there and I got feedback on this with one of my latest Japanese articles where talking about you know there's some real real big challenges for certain companies in what used to be a true JDM space as we've seen globalization and all these things and and, and whatever and one place where Japanese companies have lagged and and I think will continue to do so is in the metalwood space uh, the more performance based high horsepower type of equipment R&D intensive products you talk about, 
that's where traditional Japanese companies tend to. You are you are just looking. You're just baiting somebody to call you fat and stupid again. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah well, eh, you can be half right. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not fat. Um. <laughs> but for people that are looking for that club, say, hey, I prefer. I want to play a my year ahead, or I want to play, you know, Epon or something like that. Something having, that isn't isn't one of these. Right. Having something that looks, sounds, and feels very Japanese, which which I'm anticipating the Mark II does, but offers some of the low spin characteristics, some of the higher horsepower type of uh, advancements that it needs to compete in the North American market is a great idea. We saw Hanma almost had it. Almost they did, did have it. And it was a competent driver. It was a great yeah. driver. And it was the only driver that, you know, as far as I'm aware... Uh, had kind of that combination, Chris McGinley and team um, from the North American side, obviously a lot of the shaping and cosmetic uh, type pieces coming from the Japanese team. And that, that driver tested uh, really, really well, not top of the class across the board, but anything like that. But, um, you know, I kind of see, I kind of see Strix on uh, hopefully or potentially in that same vein for that buyer that's looking for that particular type of club, um, you know, Let's, uh, you know, let's give them some kudos for pushing that direction. And I think that's that's one buyer or that kind of category of buyers, one that uh, is probably looking at this release going, ooh. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, why not try it? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Get after it, right? Get after it. So last release for this week, because we've, whew, there's a lot of them and, and there's going to be, there's going to be more, but we're going to finish up with the banger here stealth two tony never heard tailor of tailor made never heard of it it's new didn't even hear the first one what are we talking about <laughs> the tailor made the Who's stealth tailor? Yeah, new guy on the block tailor made stealth two but those... more props more props so you know second generation of something tony much different little different like i mean it's it's not Another name. I mean, it's stealth again. Right? Yeah. So I or... in, in in my story on the drivers, uh, and we can talk about the fairway, but where fairway was where there's some cool stuff happening too. Oh, ooh, I kind of describe it as a. I know it's it's worth reading for more than ten people. I kind of <laughs> describe it as as more than a 2.0 release, like maybe a, a 2.25. If you want to get <laughs> if you're feeling optimistic, if you really love Taylor made, you might even two and a it. half. Yeah, get all the way to two and a half on this. This is <laughs> two and a half. Um, so it's it's a bit more than I was expecting. That's not to say like this is not this is not if we're looking for a point of comparison, for example, this is not going from rogue to paradigm. This right. is this is going from stealth to stealthier. Uh, yeah, but yeah, a yeah. little so a what little is stealthier than I thought? What is stealthier about the second generation? Well, let's start, the same let's start right here, right? Because this face. is That's so we're still we're still on a carbon face. face. Okay, uh, carbon it's, face. It's red ear this time, so they they darkened the red just a little bit to make it pop a bit more, and that's that's not a performance thing. It's just kind of how you're worth pointing out. So okay. they're still they're still billing it as a 60x twist based design, meaning 60x 60. meaning 60 discrete layers of carbon fire fiber. Talked to Tomo Bystead about this over at TaylorMade and. We're gonna we're gonna call it sixty ish, because what they've done is kind of changed the the underlying structure, the layering, the topology, whatever you want to call, to basically right. get more more bang. They kind of refined the inverted cone technology. That's you know tailor made speed boosting speed variable disturbing. face thickness. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's how tailor made does face forgiveness. So they kind of. Tweak the way they do layers, and, and now you have some partial layers, some complete layers. You're still in the ballpark of 60, but your your big takeaway point is you're getting a little more speed over more of the face. So what do they say? A 30% okay. increase in the per of, in the area of the face that produces 0. 0.810 COR. So you know that's so that's a the bigger technical percentage stuff. of the face, yeah, more speed over that. more more face. That's that's your takeaway there. So Okay, That's so more speed over more face. Anything else? 
So this is now more carbon fiber overall. So this is all carbon. I mean, you didn't get, it was, I mean, I feel like Callaway kind of stole their thunder a little bit because this was the most carbon fiber ever in a tailor-made chassis moving closer to a 100% carbon driver. And then Callaway came along and was like, not so fast. Like, yeah. we, have, we have no <laughs> titanium in our chassis. We have one, we got 360 degrees. You guys, you guys are not quite 360. You cannot get back to where you started from where you are, however it goes. Uh, but a lot of carbon fiber and most notably here in this ring. So a lot of people I think are going to see this ring and think, oh yeah, that's just, you know, Sim 2 all over again. False. Right. False. False. Not Sim 2. Not Sim 2. Why not? So Sim 2, this was aluminum. Correct. Right here, blue. Carbon. Here's we want to be carbon fiber. So oh. this is this is kind of a carbon fiber or carbon material, resin infused. And the point of that being instead of again the sheet material like on the crown, you have this more workable material that can be injection molded to form this ring shape. And again, yep. weight savings. It's always about weight savings. Use that here. Bigger weights in the back. That is true across all of the models. Uh, and so that kind of where you get to the, the part of the story, which is unusual for TaylorMade, a, a greater emphasis on forgiveness. Which is So wait a minute. Wait, what on earth? Ping is talking about speed. TaylorMade's talking about boosting MOI and forgiveness. What the hell's going on? We have devolved into chaos in the driver <laughs> category here. Up is down, is. left is right. Um, yellow is joyful. I don't know. I, I have no idea what's going on. Holy uh, we got, we're sticking red rings on drivers here. Yeah. Um, Holy cow. So, and, and again, let's let's be clear. TaylorMade is not going into the PIM PXG maximum MOI category. They're still a speed first company. Speed first typically means MOI, maybe not last, but certainly later. Uh, but these are across the board more forgiving. So your HD model, which is going to be your most forgiving mm -hmm. draw bias, if you want it. Um, as we saw when we got fit for the TaylorMade stuff, this this has the makings of my winter driver. And, <laughs> and basically yeah. that means, hey, I've been sitting on my ass for four months or so, not swinging a golf club. My path is grossly out to in. I am all of a sudden a slicer. And this thing goes straight. So yeah. I was hitting like slicing yep. everything off until I got, they stuck one of these in my hands and then I'm hitting high yep, draws, which means if I tried to play this in the summertime, hard left. No, that's cool. uh that is your version of uh, my sweatpants with elastic. So there you go. There you go. Question for you, Tony, if with, with these incremental changes, like you said, it's a, maybe a little bit more than you expected to see out of a second generation product they tailor made maybe did a little bit more a little bit better than you were anticipating i just bought a stealth last year i was so excited carbon new this is the deal ah. Ah. is this enough performance implication change to warrant or make my previous one i don't want to say obsolete because that 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 it's not even close but enough of a difference where you would say, yeah, I want to shell out the 600 bucks, no. 629. No, no. And no disrespect. Cause like I said, I think this is for a second generation product. This is solidly as good or better than I would expect. So this, I, I like this a lot. Um, like I said, more than I was expecting, but if, if you had a tailor-made stealth, if you have a tailor-made stealth, particularly if you were, fit for it and it's performing well for you no right. you you probably do not need a stealth too and that's you know i would say the same thing if you asked me about going from paradigm to rogue or 425 sure. to 430 or right. you know right pick, it, pick any better um, yeah generational improvement a solid generational improvement a cooler tech story than i was expecting given where we were last year with carbon face and being like, Oh my God, this is, this is really cool. We haven't really seen this for the mass market ever. Right. So yeah, this is, this is definitely more than I was expecting. Like I said, yeah, a little bit of a thunder stealer from Callaway with like, oh, we're, we got all the carbon, we have all the carbon in the world. Yeah. Uh, but again, you know, the HD, I think the HD, especially for TaylorMade, which is a company that 
in my estimation, in my opinion, has never, ever been synonymous with a forgiving driver. Uh, you know, this is probably mm-hmm. going to be among their most forgiving ever. This is a serious, and we're going to see this throughout the TaylorMade lineup. This is a serious commitment to making a forgiving golf club. Uh, maybe we should touch on the, on the, the Stealth HD irons as well. I mean, this is this is kind of like a legit effort that they made. And again, for for guys at the other end who who don't need high MOI, who are content with sub five thousand MOI, who want ball speed and low spin, like you still have this little heavier weight, so you, you, just a little bit better. Again, uh, yeah. one other thing to note too: the the original stuff we talked about face optimization, and that changes depending on the shape of the driver. But with the with the, the original stuff, they're like, you know what, everything gets the same face. Because right. that's where we are in the development cycle. And that face was optimized for Stealth Plus. With Stealth 2, all three models have a face optimized for that chassis. So better in that respect as well. But again, if you have a Stealth, if you're happy with a Stealth, keep your money, spend your money on lessons, or better yet, go find a cool golf course and have an experience. Yeah. Do you have any of the fairway woods or hybrids there, Tony? Because I have the one that I care about. How about that? That's the one. Is Although I, I should have, I should have brought the hybrid up because I really do like the the stealth two hybrids. I I, I love the stealth hybrid too. I, yeah, there this it is, is. This to there me, like, is. all right. This is my early contender for fairway wood of the year out of the. Me game. too. Like, I. We, we, nothing is proven. We don't know if this no. thing is actually going to be any good in the golfer's hands, but it it's really cool. I so the 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 tailor made fairway wood lineup as a family is what I'm so far in all the releases most excited about from the Metalwood standpoint because you have three very, very different fairway wood models. You have, they said, my personal excitement uh, around this. You had a 50-gram uh, weight, basically what they wanted to do on the Plus model. This is also their titanium model, okay? So uh, quick programming note. People think or sometimes think that the titanium model – is faster because of the titanium. It's faster because it costs more money. Exactly. It's more expensive, <laughs> therefore it's faster. Yeah. It, but it's both. It's both. No, they the titanium, it, use titanium on a driver because, yes, it's stronger, lighter, and, and more flexible to help produce additional ball speed. The biggest benefit, though, of oh. titanium construction on a fairway wood is that it's lighter. So like carbon, if you're taking carbon, in replacing steel or you're taking carbon and replacing titanium or aluminum, you get a tremendous amount of weight that you can shift, move around and do a bunch of stuff with. So yes, titanium is more expensive as a material, but typically the reason a titanium fairway wood may be faster or longer is because you can allocate a bunch of that weight to something like a 50 gram sliding weight like they have, uh, on this one, and you shove that weight all the way forward towards the uh, boom, towards the uh, center. And the Taylor made calls that the rocket setting. So if you previously played the rocket version uh, of a fairway wood in that setting, it's very similar to the existing stealth uh, plus, right? Which doesn't have the, that sliding weight to it. But man, you put that weight all the way forward, and this is like knuckleball in Sid, the weight garage are, right that's what they call it the kind of the weight garages the weight garage started. yeah you're on a little road there pull it right into the garage pull all the way to the front hit the tennis ball mm-hmm. all the way pull all the way to the front right up to the tennis ball and that is low launch low spin you move the weight all the way to the back now it's a little bit more forgiving higher launch higher spin taylor made says that uh you know, this one has the adjustable sleeve as well, the loft adjustability, so which is plus or minus two degrees. But they said basically, when you the total adjustability on this thing is roughly a little over 500 rpm of backspin, which yeah, is to be a clear, lot. right? There are it's not front or back, right? There are no, you can go seven, there's seven. Yeah. Yeah, so there's I mean, it's from a fitting perspective, it's it's almost a little overwhelming, but I mean, even really simple, right? Front back or back front back. there's the front <laughs> back and then you can get in the middle here as well and then yep. kind of go from there and i did yep. use a titleist wrench to loosen this up so i may spontaneously combust at any moment here but. <laughs> so that's the, i mean and it's and it's a you know right around 170 cc's it's a very neutral 
size. They're only making it in a three wood and a five hood because of the adjustability, because you can go up and down again, two degrees. And then you have the front, middle, back, the weight settings. They felt like with two heads that you could basically cover the range of, of what any person would reasonably want. It's or robust. Need. It, it is, is robust. It is robust. It is as our resident fairway wood guy who kind of has to dig into all this stuff where, where you come down, but in terms of, you know, just kind of an early favorite technology wise. So I think, you know, I've heard good things. I've seen good things. I, I think the paradigm stuff's really good. Cobra, I think always makes a good fairway wood. I love the Titleist I have in my bag right now. Right. Uh, Ping starting to talk about speed and maybe we'll actually awesome. see an LS tech in a year or two. <laughs> maybe summer. even by summer. summer but this this summer. for me is like hey what's what what's your favorite fairway wood so far and i have been excited about fairway woods but you know unless it's seven more. i i wish more people would join me in, in excitement around fairway woods um but this one yeah. Woo fairways come on <laughs> there, fairway there, woods. <laughs> there we go i i man I, yeah this one is is the one i'm personally most excited about because of all the different permutations. So the ability to really fit individual scenarios, I think is going to be, um, yeah, really, really cool. Now in all fairness have not hit, I personally have not hit or tested, uh, any of them. Um, well, wait, wait, I, I mean, you hit this one at Taylor made, right? I hit so. that one at Taylor made, loved it. I hit the, um, ping one and again, really enjoyed it, but, just, did you hit the uh did you hit Paradigm at Top Golf El Segundo? I did not hit the Paradigm mm. yet. I wanted I didn't want to hit Top Golf balls. I wanted to hit like on a range and you know those kind of things. But anyway, I, I feel you. I love the way the uh the the Paradigm sets up. Maybe throw in the Cobra LS. Ah, you could if you're looking for that bomber, you know, absolute cannon missile three wood how's that for a shootout you know take the triple diamond paradigm take stealth plus take ls cobra and let's go have ourselves a little knockdown drag out uh bare knuckle fight tony now we we're talking about drivers and i think man this is this is one of those years where the stars align because you know, taylor may or excuse me titleist launched late summer and everybody else. And I mean, everybody else, there's, you know, a lot more to talk about uh, in the coming, in the, in the next couple of weeks, everybody of, of any real consequence has a new driver on the market. And so that's, that's exciting, but I mean, it's an unusually good year for fairway woods. Yeah. And really with the rest of the, you know, you still got the V steel in the middle and then you have a, a fairway wood that I'm calling the pancake. Uh, which is the HD model. It's flatter. Like you put this thing on the ground and literally it kind of looked like a pancake with carbon on top. Like it is, it sits low to the ground. It's thin. It's the HD model. So it's a game improvement fairway ish. wood ish. But I mean, it, you know, when I hit it, it was like, it feels a little bit like a cheat code. Now it is high and spinny and and all of those things you would think an HD would be, but even Scotty Scheffler hit was like, this thing's awesome. If it weren't you know that it didn't spin so much, so it's like, well I don't know, throw some hot melt in there, get the launch and spin down. And uh, I guess the point to me with the pancake, and and I want, I mean I think a pancake like in a five wood or something. Oh, get like a <laughs> rocket three wood, a pancake five wood. Rockets pancakes. You got rockets and pancakes. That's a, emojis. Uh huh. I yeah. I mean, I th again. I, I I think you know what Tanley did with you know really discreet offerings, and these are very discreet offerings. Um, yeah, probably uh, most excited about those thus far. So that's what I, I think. It's a that's a great option. I mean, there are guys out there who just look at a fairway wood and the prospect of hitting it off the deck with the. You know, like the face looks tall and you just look at it like there's there's just no way I'm going to be able to to deliver this into a ball in such a way as to actually make it go up in the air. Right. This addresses that in a really cool way. And again, not for me, not for you, definitely not for me with the spin properties. Although right. again, maybe maybe it is a good winter fairway one. <laughs> but 
but yeah, it's, and this is again, throughout the entire TaylorMade line, it's, it's something I haven't seen much from them before, but it does seem to be a conscious effort to, I mean, basically say, look, we're going to, we're going to make golf clubs for everybody now, mm -hmm. not just better golfers, not just low spin golfers, not just golfers who don't give a damn about forgiveness. Uh, we're going to try and win in the hitting bay, but we're also going to give some options where, where maybe we go above and beyond that in a way we haven't in the past. So yeah, I think cool stuff all around from TaylorMade. Mm -hmm. 2.0 product, more to it than I would expect again. Uh, so yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's more coming. There's more coming next week, Tony. There's more coming the week after that. We got to get back to our computers and start typing and researching. And no doubt you guys will have questions. You'll have Tony throwing props. Last I, week. I, I thought about throwing the egg. Did you? It occurred to me that I was going to have to be the one to clean it up. So we're just going to be like, well, there it goes and use your imagination. We're... Yep. Last week you're throwing, uh, uh, throwing paradigms Carbon around. Chassis. You're throwing paradigms around. We got all sorts of stuff. But as always, when you have questions, and you will, let us know. Post them below Golf Spy T, Golf Spy C, Chris Nickel, Tony, Covey. We got more coming to you, but let us know what we can do to help you. Have a great day. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you soon. We out.